ncreview.com. Uh, this is Miriam Knight from New Consciousness Review speaking to Paul and Patricia Richards. They're the authors of Wild Attraction, The Energetic Facts of Life and a Ruthlessly Practical Guide to Extraordinary Relationships. You, you and Patty have clearly developed an extraordinary relationship, and yet in your book you say that our society has become in some ways a showcase of dysfunctional sexuality. Is that what prompted you to write this book? You, you got it. <laughs> I, to be honest, Miriam, we have amassed a huge, huge library of material, and I think we've been doing the relationship part of it for probably 15 years, showing people basic ways to make your relationship great and to add the energy component in, which sparks up the old kind of um, maybe stayed relationships and also helps people attract more functional relationships. And what I started watching is we're training more and more advanced people that have been with us, some of them 10, 15 years, and I have a real commitment to new people and to beginners because I think I guess maybe it is, it's the nurse practitioner in me, whatever. I don't like um, things to get so exclusive that what is valuable isn't available. And I could see Paul becoming more and more exclusive and unable to really um, have mediums to talk to new people. And I was always opening the door and bringing new people in and sharing it. And this material is so valuable. It really was a let's put it all in one place because we had so much of it on video. We did incredible video lectures for years. And it was in, you know, material for the school, but it wasn't all in one place. And it's such an incredible body of work. So it really was a looking each other in the eye. After we had done this, an audio course called Through the Eyes of a Seer that took years, we were pretty tired, but we looked at each other and said, you know, it's just time to put it in one place. There was a reference point. It was almost like leaving a flag behind. This is possible. This is what humans are capable of. And uh, I didn't intend for it to feel that way, but it really felt like, what we experienced together when we got together and in our relationship, somewhere there needs to be a record, even if it's just a hint that somebody says there's something extraordinary possible. It's inspiring. Do you mind Very if I, so. I love this question, but I don't want to impose. Would it be a problem for you if I took the baton from Patty? And <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Is it okay with you, Mary? Of course. <laughs> Yeah, because I love this topic. The the we have we had. A, I'm just um, retiring from private practice, but for a long time, 22 years, I had a private practice. When I looked at people as a seer, and just pa painted a portrait of them, and in that portraiture, I'm as I sit with you now, I'm remembering specific things over those 22 years in which I could see uh, that a person was listening for and not hearing. Uh, some particular message from someone outside themselves and was instead doing, had a behavior pattern or a, 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 a way of thinking that was stuck uh, on a substitute or a sublimation of that. So it would sort of in a simple-minded way, it would be a person um, who wanted to hear they did a good job at work and, and spends their time asking for a promotion or angling for a promotion. As a simple example, but I'm thinking of dozens of kind of more complicated ones, uh, but uh, gradually, I started uh, keeping track. What were the messages uh, that people seemed to lack the most, or were doing the most behaviors in lieu of? Uh, and the message, the five message list, is a distillation of the ones numerically keeping track of, of the specific cases uh, that I could see. Well, th there's a huge body of be human behavior that is a substitute for simply asking. And at the same time, we gradually noticed that people were not necessarily encouraged to ask for messages. And, and so uh, that's how that list, long ago, probably 15 or 18 years ago, we published that list originally. Uh, but uh, there's a bigger context for, for this discussion, and that is that the, that the part of the person that needs the messages is not their essence. You know, the, the, it's not the essential nature of a person, it's the personality. And no, that, that's a perfect segue into my next question, which is, what is the relationship among the, the physical body, the energy body, and the conscious and subconscious mind? Ah, great question. And Patty. Uh, 
it's it's funny. It's the first thing that I actually talk to people about in classes because I think it's it gives you a framework to try to understand at least the framework that we're working from. And um, I have people usually draw a, a circle and make little divisions. And in our in the way that we look at it, you have a physical body which we're very well aware of, and it. Um, you know, it has the it has its needs that you're very aware of. It needs food and water and all those wonderful things. And then you have an energy, what we call an energy body, that is that field around you. And it has certain needs too, which is really what we're trying to show people. This is what your energy system needs. And then, the, so I guess what I would say, Miriam, is for us, when you look at someone, if somebody comes in, I look at where is their attention? How much of their attention is in their physical life? How much is in their what we call imaginary life, which is their their emotions and their psychology and their intelligence, how much is in their energy life and how much is in their spiritual. And we're trying to actually say it's possible to stand in the middle and have a healthy relationship with all of them so that in any moment you don't just have this, I'm just always thinking my way through life. Because when you look at some people, all their or a lot of their attention is just in their intellect or just in their emotions. So you have women or men who are they won't make a decision or emotion unless it feels right. And you'll hear this, well, it didn't feel right. And I kind of sit back and I marvel. And I think, well, there's other sources of input. Is it a physical decision? How does energy play into this? How does, you know, intelligence play in? So a lot of what we're doing is trying to give people a framework that says you're a creature of many realms and you get to stand in the middle and have a healthy relationship with all of them. They bump up against each other. And if you change one in one realm, if you change the, the energy of something, it will change something physically. But you have to first understand them and understand how they work together. You're kind of percolating over there. Oh, I am. The, we, the heart <laughs> of what we uh, advocate is uh, summed up in this, the phrase, one motion, three bodies, three realms. And the idea is, if I can kiss Patty's hand, which you can, which I can, uh, and just do it physically, and just kiss her physically, it's a certain Im level of impact. If I, uh, li in, in the imaginary me, my recreation of this, uh, what I register internally, if I'm really in my imagination, the imaginary Paul is kissing Patty's imaginary hand, it's more impact. With you physically, too. When, with both. Mm -hmm. When I'm really intentionally and, and with the, my attention inhabiting both. But when you add the non-ordinary, and energy is kind of a shorthand for, for a, a very expanded uh, map of non-ordinary reality that includes more than energy. But if you just say energy as a kind of a shorthand mm -hmm. for that, mm -hmm. and you include just my energy field, the energy in my hands, uh, the energy in my immediate field, and all those things kiss her hand. Uh, nice. One motion, three bodies, three realms would change the world, uh, nice. and uh, it is. It's that's it, anyone uh, can fulfill their promise better and the promise of the moment better, and also read what's or listen to what's being spoken in that combinant world. Um, so it's a wonderful uh, model that uh, is the heart of how we live. Yeah, and it's actually very fun. You can tell. Uh, yeah. My, <laughs> I I get the biggest kick out of getting a group of people together, men and women. I mean, I just had a class the other night, and the guy spends most, most of his time fishing in Alaska. And to have him get it and in 10 minutes show him, well, just kiss, I'll have him kiss their own arm with just the physical. And, the, and then I'll have him add energy, which is a, moves a little bit in front. The looks on their faces and the comments that come back next week, you know, and the, the men that are, you know, this guy was talking about when he learned about how to actually talk to women, from a gender basis, what begins to percolate in their lives? It's so fun. It's so interesting because it's it doesn't take uh, you know fifty years to learn how to kiss somebody with your energy body and your physical, and the rewards are they're instantaneous. So. Yeah.